Is that is that something you've always done in the past with, with guys, or does it just depend on the player and maybe the, the the length of the bench and kind of what you have as far as backups and stuff? Yeah, I think a lot of it depends on the, the player. Like if he was a freshman or a sophomore and needed reps or whatnot, you'd probably need to get them. But I don't think that's that's any big news that, that you want to uh, maybe cut back your practice time a little bit for a guy that's playing 37 minutes a game. Uh, uh, and we can do that. We can do that the way the schedule's set up. We play two games a week from here on out. And you've got to take one day off, and we'll figure out a way to squeeze in a, another half day or a full day and, and uh, cut our minutes back in practice. And so he, he won't think he's getting any favors, I mean, because he's going to do the same thing basically everybody else does. But, but I do know that would probably benefit him over time. Is it, uh, Evan's one of the quicker guys you know. Yeah, he's one. Yeah, he's one of the best players we'll face too. Yeah, you know, I've watched, I've been watching tape, and he's so good coming off ball screen, especially going to his right. And and uh, you know, he's he he's a great off balance shooter. He can get all the way to the hole. And you know, he he didn't beat us by himself last year. Their team collectively whipped us pretty good, but he was by far the best player in the game when we played in Stillwater last year. And and uh, you know, he can get twenty five any night as. Proven, he's gotten 40 in a game. Uh, uh, Forte can get 25 any night. He's done that, and, and Carroll can get 25 in any night. He's done that. So they've got three guys on the perimeter that can really score the ball. Bill, you're so good at giving our kids an edge. Is playing Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and that they're on four? Is that more difficult for you? In that you know, it's just hard to yeah. to get that edge to get your kids. Ready? I, I I think uh, I think that. Uh, uh, Coaches know, like 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 we knew going to Norman, that was going to be a really hard game. Uh, they're better than the record, but on the flip side, they were also due to have a good stretch, and and uh, and they did uh, in the first half. I, I would bet that's probably the best half of basketball they played this year, at, at least the last ten minutes uh, of the half. Of course, how how could you not say that they outscored us twenty-two to four? Uh, but Oklahoma State is even a little bit more different than than. Uh, than uh, OU, you know, Oklahoma State, you know, basically lost a one possession game at Baylor. Uh, they beat uh, Wichita State at Wichita State, or it may have been in 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 the the uh, uh, is it the Intrust Building down in Wichita? Uh, uh, it may have been in the Intrust Building, but still, it was a it was a it was a away game, and beat them by 15 or 18, whatever it was. Uh, you know, West Virginia got them pretty good, but West Virginia, when they when West Virginia plays well, they could knock anybody out. To, uh, and 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 the game last night, Iowa State. You know, they they led by four with six minutes left. So there there was, I mean, they're right there. They're they're, they're better than their record. So those are the games that are most concerning. Is when you know players may look at something and, and they may see zero and four, but the reality of it is, I mean, they could easily be. You know, two and two or three and one very easily, and and uh, and and that's with playing a, a very difficult schedule thus far. Uh, uh, everybody in our league plays a hard schedule, but there's a couple of teams that have played harder schedules than everybody to date. And I would think that Oklahoma State and and uh, and uh, Texas Tech have probably played the hardest schedules that anybody's played. They uh, seem to get a lot of offensive rebounds, force a lot of turnovers. Yeah. Uh, how much are they? I know he worked for. How, how much are they like what West Virginia did, or how are they different? Oh well, I th I think that there's some ways they're alike. Uh, I don't think they're going to press as much relentlessly. Uh, I think they will press some. Uh, where where you know West Virginia, they'll press after a miss. I mean, they'll just go trap the ball uh, uh, wherever it is. And and I don't think Oklahoma State will do that as much. But Oklahoma State will probably pressure uh, ever bit as much as West Virginia in the half court. Um, and then, and then offensively, they do something totally different. You know, he, Brad's running, you know, the the, the old Johnny Orr offense. Uh, uh, Dana Altman perfected it at Creighton, and and uh, they're doing a great job. You know, he ran it at Stephen F, and they're doing a great job with it in Stillwater. But it's 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 different. If you if you never seen it, which we haven't, you know, it could really trip you up. So I'm glad we got a couple of days to prepare for them. But but uh, uh, I think there's some similarities in philosophy. Pressure, turn people over, create extra possessions, those type things. The way they go about it's a little different than Hugs. So, what kind of an advantage is that for him to step in and have a guy like Juwan waiting there? Well, you know, this this is not this is this is just a fact. You know, 
uh, uh, Travis drew a sh short straw last year with with Forte and, and Evans yeah. being out. I mean, you, you got arguably the two leading uh, uh, scores in the backcourt in the league, and you don't have either one of them. So, and then and then Brad was able to inherit that plus a, 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 a kid Carroll that has really gotten much better uh, uh, this year with the new system or whatever the whatever the case would be. So, I think I think he benefited from from that without question. I think he'd be the first to tell you that I, I know you know we we won more games when I got here because Simeon and Langford and Miles were still here I mean that's that's kind of how it goes sometimes uh, uh, but but certainly uh, Evans when when he's when he's playing well and and you know he's been nicked up just a little bit this year but when he's playing well he, he's as good as any any point guard in the country he, he, he's really a good player you, you were able to win Tuesday without much from your bench how important is it uh, to get those guys going going moving forward though? Well, it is. It's imperative. We should have seven starters. You know, when when you look at when you look at our team, instead of saying we're only playing seven, you should say, well, God, they got seven starters, uh, and and that's a way that you know you you obviously would spin it as a positive rather than a negative. I mean, a lot of people would like to have seven starters, and and I think it's all those guys have shown over time that they they could all easily be that. So, and when Doak was here, we should have had eight of starters, uh, uh, but but. Uh, I, it, it is imperative that that LeGerald and Carlton produce. What are you seeing out of LeGerald right now? I, uh, I I think he's doing fine. I don't think he's very active. You know, he he's not rebounding, not creating extra possessions. I I, I looked at the stats today. Uh, where's Jesse? I looked at the stats today, and and uh, the most amazing. Everybody talks about LeGerald's shooting stuff, and you know, he's shooting. I think he and Sphere are both shooting about 44% from three, which is we wouldn't have never thought that. But we would think in 405 minutes he'd have more than nine steals. You know, a, a guy that athletic and active. So, so I mean, I'm not real good in math, but that's about a that's about what a steal every 50 minutes, which a guy like that that can't be. So, so that tells you that I, I think the thing that he can improve in as much is his activity. And we, and we said this a lot, but it's, it's a fact. It, it, it's a fact. He, 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 and, he and Josh should be our best two offensive rebounders. And Josh is at times, but LeGerald hasn't been. And, uh, and of course, he should be a much, much more active on the defensive end. And that's not being mean, or, or, or that's, just, that's just a fact. If, if you want to know how he can get better, that would be an area that he can definitely get better at. And everybody's got areas they can get better in. Talked a lot about you know guys focus on on the right things and then the rest falls in place, defense and then your offense yeah. comes. Is that hard for Carlton? I mean, is he more offensive? Yeah, yeah. There's no question. There's no question. Uh, uh, CB may say that's the way he thinks, but that's not in his core. Uh, 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 he's always been a guy that that scored the ball pretty easy and shot a lot of jumpers and those sorts of things, which is fine. I mean, that, there's nothing wrong with that. And but I do think I, I thought Carlton, after watching the tape, played played pretty actively in, in Norman. You said you liked having a couple extra days to prepare for their offense. What system wise, what makes it difficult? Well, it's just something you, you you'll, you'll see once a year. Uh, period. You're not going to see it. You'll, well, no, you won't. You'll see it twice a year, maybe three times a year. But they'll all, it'll all be by Oklahoma State. You're not going to play anybody else in America uh, uh, that that does the, the the things that they do the way they do it. Uh, Oregon may run a version of it or whatnot, but the, the, they run it. It's different, and and uh, certainly it's uh, uh, you know uh, Frank put it in at K State. Uh, the year we held pull into 38. Uh, so obviously we didn't really guard it that well at that particular moment. So, uh, and, and, and I think Oklahoma State runs it better than what K-State did back then, at least the offensive part of it. And then we talk a lot about what your four guard line does in the half court. What does it do for you guys once you get a defensive rebound and then start transition? What does it do for that aspect? I, well, I, it's not that we have four. We don't run a secondary break, so it's not that – we have four guards that makes it uh, where we're hard to guard. What we have, we have four good players that you can pitch ahead and they can all go make plays. So it wouldn't make any difference to me if it was a five man or a four man. If a guy can run the wing and pitch it to him and go make a play, you know that I don't know if that has really a lot to do with you know having four guards out there because if it was Marcus Morris and he was in at the four, he'd be doing the same things uh, that the guards would be doing. I just think we have some good playmakers in the open court. Outside of foul trouble, have you given any thought to 
five guards out there, Vic instead of the the big? No, not really. No, no, no. I I get it. We'll have to do it some. I mean, at some point in time, we'll have to do it. Maybe late game when they're set, when we got to defend the three. And, and but Landon's hard to take out because Landon's such a good defender and a rebounder. He he's hard to take out and he's smart too. What's Landon doing maybe differently now that he wasn't doing a month ago? Uh, well, a you know he, he Land Land is a pretty tough guy and he he doesn't he doesn't uh, complain much. But a he's healthy. You know, I don't know that he was ever healthy early, and then, and then when 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 you want to start and you want it real bad and you're not a hundred percent, you don't really let on to anybody that you're struggling because you don't want the coach to say, well, here you take some time off then until you get well, because you want to be out there all the time. So, I think I think a he's feeling better physically, and then and then b I, you know he just playing to his size. He's He's doing what he can do. He's he's a great defensive rebounder. He's an opportunistic offensive rebounder without question. Some of the best possessions we've had all year is because of Landon's kept balls alive and 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 stolen us some extra possessions. And and uh, he's our best talker and and he's our best defender uh, uh, in the in the post area. So I, I I don't know that he's doing anything exceptional offensively. That's a lot different than what he's done in the past. He, except just play to his strengths. He's trying to score before he catches and. And he's he's shooting a higher percentage from the free throw line, and and uh, you know I, th- I think his confidence level is higher because he, he knows he's going to be out there. Is the big kind of the key to having success when you go to four guards? That one big. Uh, well, yeah, you could say that. Uh, you know, uh, the the team that was the hardest to guard that I can remember uh, in recent memory. Uh, was Missouri when they had their great team when they played Ratliff at the five. He was really a four man playing the five. You play Kim English at the four and Dimon and Dixon and, and, and uh, uh, I'm trying to think who was the uh, Oppressi. I mean, that's a hard team to guard. You got four guys that can all go make plays and all can shoot and you got a, a five man that never missed a bunny. I mean, so, so to me that, 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 so, so yes, in yes, in theory, I, I think that you're right. Uh, but, you know, just, just having four guys that can stretch it from all the spots, that, that would make it hard to guard for anybody. I think you guys went from non-con shooting, I think, 50, a little over 50% in free throws. Now you're leading the Big 12. Any reason for the turnaround? I mean, is that something you stressed? Yeah, since we're doing, yeah, really coached up free throws uh, in the last uh, four games. Uh, talk about you just we don't talk about stuff much. We, You know, you, you guys – Break this down far more than we break it down uh, uh, in in film or in practice or whatnot. All right, everybody on the free throw line. Let's we're going to shoot for seven minutes, or when you're not in the game, everybody's shooting free throws, or you know whatever it is. But but that but it's not something that that we uh, we spend a lot of time dwelling on on that. What what would you like to see from Lightfoot or Colby that would kind of make you trust them more to? <coughs> More in the Big 12 games. Uh, I would I would say uh, just being able to carry out defensive assignments and and uh, uh, play play smarter. You know there, there there's some things like like Mitch. I want to play Mitch, and he got in the game the other day. And you know we're it's not that it's that complicated, but we're ball screen defense and we're in third what we call 32 and and and. Uh, uh, you know, he he forgot to hedge a ball screen. The guy just went and made a layup, and and uh, you know you can't have that. I mean, it's it's an easy play, uh, uh, and and I think it's not that he can't do it. It's just that he gets excited right right now, and he's trying too hard. Uh, but but he'll he'll do much better when I can put him out there and just keep him out there. Uh, he'll do much better. You know, the the other day, uh, Carlton got two. And Landon had one, so I said, "Well, let's play instead of Landon taking a chance on getting his second with seven minutes left in the half or six. Let's let's play somebody else to see if they could, you know, do it." And 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 in that little stretch there, it was a really bad stretch, and it wasn't all on them, but but coincidentally, it, it, you know, they were in the game, so they didn't get a chance to to play as much. But you know, you know, if if. Uh, uh, I, I say that you know you can't set moving screens. You, you got to come to a jump stop before every. I mean, just little things like that, and and you get out there, and and uh, it doesn't quite happen that way. And next thing you know, you you know you you've got two turnovers in two minutes, and and uh, uh, gave up a layup, and 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 now let's get Landon back in. So so uh, I just like for him just to be solid defensively. 
Bill, from what you've seen over the first few weeks, top to bottom, could this be about as good as the Big 12's been since you've been here? Yeah, I, I think it is. I mean, it, it, you know, we've had some good years where the league's been really good. Uh, but I don't think I can remember, you know, last year, you know, I think we were one for a while, OU was one for a while, uh, Iowa State and West Virginia all got in the top ten at some point in time. Um, and, and, and maybe Baylor did too, I can't remember. Uh, but we may have had five teams last year that worked their way at some point in time in the top ten. That, that probably won't happen this year. But, but I, I, I do think that the league is as good as it's been. And, and, and you look at it, I mean, TCU's much improved. They go to Texas and win. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, Texas Tech's better. We saw that. Uh, and even though they were good last year, Kansas State, you know, they, they're two close games away from being 4-0. Uh, so, so, you know, the, the, the league is definitely better. I don't know if we're quite as top-heavy as we were last year, but I think there's more balance. Guard the best position in the league, you think? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, you know, I, I watched Monty Morris last night. He was spectacular, and then you got Evans who can go for huge numbers, and and you look at what Stokes Stokes had, is playing really, really well uh, at K State, and 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 the transfer from Miami at Baylor's excellent, you know, uh, and then West Virginia they got about three, but but certainly uh, uh, Carter and Miles are playing at high. I mean, there's some really good good guards in our league. You know, Brad kind of, he's taken this from Huggins and from Frank and then he plays a lot of guys with yeah. rotation. Is that any easier or harder to do as a first year coach in a program? Or? I don't know. I, I don't know. I would say if anything, it'd probably be easier to do. Uh, uh, to to uh, uh, put guys out there and, and let them go and, and you know, uh, your first year you're kind of, you're kind of, uh, uh, you know, you got to win games. Don't get me wrong, uh, uh, but but I, I would say sometimes when you go into a situation, you're more open to doing some things that you think in your mind are other are other things you want to do than than maybe after you've been at a place and kind of set in your ways like I am here. Uh, so I, I would say it'd probably be a little bit easier maybe uh, to play that many guys early. I don't know if anybody's playing more guys than what Beard's playing at Texas Tech. I mean, he subbed three guys every dead ball against us, it seemed like. And, and uh, you know, Brad's going to sub a lot. Bob subs a lot. Uh, maybe it's just from uh, uh, certain coaching families, you know, that, that that's, a, that's a philosophy. But, but there, there is something to having fresh guys in there all the time. Do you work uh, a lot on Carlton's hands, or is this just a little stretch where? Uh, you know what? That that that's a, that's actually a good question. He he hasn't he has better hands than what he's shown, but uh, what we need to do is is uh, I mean, we've done it in the past. You know, throw bad passes. You know, have guys catch the ball with tennis balls and do different things, which we which we've done. Um, we can get a I guess get one of those football machines and 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 have guys practice it down and out and catch his high and low passes or whatever. But but for for the most part, we haven't we haven't probably done as much as what we. We should do and do in that area. I don't think his hands are bad. I just think he just loses focus. Well, it seems like this time of year, a lot of times when you're not coaching or working here, you're on the road somewhere trying to recruit. Balance? Does it get tough this time of year? Whether how much time do you spend here and how much time you should be on the road? And no, I, I actually prefer this time of year. Uh, I should spend more time on the road uh, this time of year, and, and and I don't spend probably as much time as I should because I like being here. With the team, and I don't. I'm not going to miss practice to go recruit uh, or anything like that. But but I actually prefer in season where you know where you're going to be every day, uh, as opposed to out of season. This to me, this is much more relaxing uh, from that standpoint than what it would be in the spring or the fall. Anything else? Thanks, coach. Okay, guys. Thanks. Nice. Thanks.